Well, praise the Lord and welcome to the Global Connection Network Bible Study. This is Thursday, the 11th of, of July, and I'm so glad to have each one of you joining in with us today. Uh, we are having a, a wonderful time of fellowship just before we started the recording and just getting to know one another. It's just so wonderful to see people from around the world serving the Lord and 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 just connecting one with another. And so we want to we want to continue to add to our fellowship and try to reach people from all over the planet. And I think it's a good thing, a necessary thing that uh, men and women come together uh, in prayer and in Bible study and just get around the word of God and just let the spirit of the Lord lead us. Uh, that's really what this is all about is, is we're uh, sh iron sharpens iron. So we're going to connect one with another. And uh, so we're going to have each person to speak a little bit uh, on this topic that we're going to deal with on today. And we're going to uh, share with each other. And Lord, we just need your guidance. Speak to us, speak through us. We thank you, Lord God, for your anointing. And we believe right now that you will destroy yokes and lift burdens and cause captives to go free in the name of Jesus. We cast out every demonic thing, every hindering spirit, that the spirit of the Lord will be free to move amongst us right now and bring healing and deliverance and peace to every person who hears this today in Jesus' name, amen. And so we're going to share the screen today and talk to you on a subject that I think is really good uh, for all of us to um, to to deal with, and I am going to if if there's anything that looks strange on your screen, yeah, let that black know. line. Okay, the black line is there, and I'm gonna know I have to remove that. Uh, I think that's it there. Okay, is it all gone? No, not quite. Now it is. That? Okay. Okay, this was our study from last time. It was called How God Picks Fruit. And we were talking about the fruit of the Spirit and how that the Spirit of the Lord leads us in everything that we do. And we walk in obedience to the Spirit of the Lord. We're still on that general theme today uh, about how God uses us uh, in ministry. And today we really want to put emphasis on simplicity of the gospel and the necessity to keep it simple. I know that there are many people out there. I come across uh, ministers. I come across various people who are out there uh, preaching. And oftentimes the, the essence of the true message is lost when people throw in a lot of their own opinions and they throw in a lot of doctrines from their church denomination. And when we do that, we can hide the central message. And what I mean by that is that when uh, people uh, uh, try to uh, speak on the, the true message uh, of the gospel uh, to, to win souls, Sometimes they're using other ideas. Uh, they're coming from some other uh, doctrines that are not uh, going to get people saved. Well, I think the Apostle Paul was dealing with that uh, when he spoke to the church in Corinth. I'm going to ask everybody to mute right now. I'm not sure where the background noise is coming from, but if everyone can mute your mics, mute yourselves. Paul speaks in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11, and we're looking primarily at verse number three. He says, but I fear that my enemy, as the servant of God Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And simplicity really means something that is simple and easy. The gospel message that brings salvation is a message that has to be simple and it has to be easy enough for even small children 
to hear the message of the gospel and they can be saved. We know that there are many things that we can teach on. We know that there are many uh, depths in the scripture, but when it comes down to the message of salvation that is going to draw people into the kingdom of God, we have to make sure that it is very simple. The Bible talks about desiring the sincere milk of the word, and we're to grow by the milk of the word. You cannot feed a baby uh, heavy meats and strong uh, vegetables and hard food when the baby is just born. Uh, the, when a newborn baby comes into the world, that newborn baby uh, is expecting something that he can digest. And so he's taking in what he, he can digest, which is usually milk, but it has enough nourishment in the milk for that child to begin to the growing process and the developing process. But if you try to give that newborn baby uh, strong vegetables and meats, that baby cannot handle it. Even though there's nutrition in the meat, you know, there's nutrition in the vegetables, but the child can't take it in that form. He has to take it in the form of milk. And so we have to think about it in the same way when people are coming to the Lord, they cannot handle strong meats. When it comes down to hearing the gospel message, what is going to bring them into Christ? They have to hear the central message and we don't need to mix it up with a whole lot of other stuff. People will mix the gospel up and mix up uh, the teaching with so many other things that don't even matter. Uh, they, they may be good teachings. They may be things that's, uh, that's good for a growing Christian or something that's good for someone who is fully developed in the word and skillful in the word of God. But for that newborn babe in Christ, uh, they need to get the sincere milk of the word. I noticed something here, Romans chapter one, verse 16, Paul says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God under salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. He's letting us know here that the power is in the gospel message itself. Not so much the person who delivers the message, not so much in all of the other stuff that we throw in there. The message of the gospel is simple, but it is powerful enough to draw a soul into the kingdom of God. The message of God is in itself the, the power that is going to make a difference in a person's life and change their life. We don't have to add other things to it. We don't have to uh, talk about, you know, laws that you have to keep and uh, days that you're supposed to worship on this day and not supposed to worship on that day. You're not, you know, uh, all of these things about, well, this is the right food to eat. Don't eat that. And you eat this. And, and then they start talking about, uh, you know, special days and special uh, kinds of celebrations. Celebrate this holiday and don't celebrate that. I mean, people get into a whole lot of things that don't even matter as far as salvation is concerned. And so they bring about confusion. John 3.16 is the simple gospel message. All of you know it, but it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, this is the central message of the gospel. First, God loves you. That's all people really need to know. God loves you. You know, that's the message that the whole world needs. We have a lot of chaos going on in the world, and it's because people don't even know how much God loves them. Uh, we wouldn't have all the violence. We wouldn't have all of the confusion that we have if people realize how much our creator loves them. He loves us so much that he proved it by giving us the best he has to offer to us as a gift. And the gift that he gave us is his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. And through Jesus Christ, 
He says, all you have to do is believe that he has already paid the price for us. He came into the world. He gave his life so that we don't have to sacrifice our own life uh, in hell uh, to pay for our own sins. We don't have to pay for our own sins. Jesus already paid the price for us. We don't have to understand all of that and, and why and how all of that came about, but just believe. That's all he says. All we need to do is just believe he did it. Just believe he did it for us. Just, just believe that he gave his best for us and all we have to do is accept what he's already done. Now, you see how simple that is? We don't have to complicate that. A little child can hear that and say, yes, I believe on Jesus. Yes, I, I, don't, I don't know all of the ins and outs of, of how he came to in, in, in the world and what, what, what year did he come in the world and all of that. How, how is that important? What's important is that he did it. It's, it's just important that God loves us so much that he would do that for us. So all you have to do is believe. Just that simple. Look at verse 17. He says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So salvation comes only through the son of God, Jesus Christ. A little child can hear that and believe it. John 3.18 says, he that believes on him is not condemned, but he that believes not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. Well, notice he keeps using the term believe. He's not telling you that you have to do a whole bunch of different things. You uh, keep this law and, and, and you have to uh, you have to wear a certain type of clothes. You have to join a certain type of church. You have to do this. You have to do that. He didn't come up with all of these things about what you have to do. It's not about doing. It's just about believing, putting your trust in God, and he will show you the way. That takes a supernatural act, of course. You cannot believe except he draws you. The Bible says, that you can only come to God except uh, when when God himself draws you by his spirit. So this is still a work of the spirit of God. And what an honor it is if you do believe, because you believe only because God has accepted you and he gave you the power and the ability to believe. So the belief comes from within. When God uh, approves of you and God wants you to be saved, He's the one that gives you the ability to believe. Oh, our good works can't save us. John 1 17 says, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the law was necessary for the time, uh, for that dispensation of time, because God had to teach us what is it like to live holy. And God had to teach us through the law of Moses the, the, the things that he considers good. How can we live for God? How can we worship God? And it was through the law that we learned how to worship God. And it was also through the law that we learned that we are sinners and we need to be saved. We need the Lord to save us. We can see how, uh, how far away from a relationship with God we are when we are looking at the laws and the commandments in the Old Testament. But it says, now Jesus comes by grace and truth. Grace and truth is what teaches us how to live the way God wants us to live. You cannot do it in your own strength. You cannot do it in your own ability. Because look at all those laws and commandments that God gave in the Old Testament. It's impossible for man to keep all those laws and furthermore, you cannot keep all those laws in, in, in your own flesh because you, you don't have the, the desire to do it. <laughs> These are the things that we don't want to do. To the most part, we don't want to love our enemies. <laughs> we, you know, we, we don't want to do those things in ourselves. But when grace and truth comes, he gives us the want to. Wow. He actually puts the desire in us 
to want to do the will of God. Once again, that is by the spirit of God. Ephesians 2, 7, you know this one as well, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace, you are saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Grace is a gift and salvation is a gift. You cannot save yourself. You cannot, uh, you cannot do the works and earn salvation. So no matter what good works you do, you will never be able to earn salvation. Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ as a gift to us. Not of works, verse 9, lest any man should boast. So if it was of our works, if it was of our good deeds, then we would have something to brag about. But it is not because of our good deeds. It is only because of him. Verse 10 says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, this is the important part about works. You can only do the good works that God approves of through Jesus Christ. You get saved uh, not, not because you did good works, but you get saved so that you can do good works. See what I'm saying? The works did not bring you salvation. But when you are saved, the works are the works of the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of God can now communicate with you, and he can give you what he wants you to do. See, there are people who are doing good works in the world, and we know that they are good works, but that doesn't necessarily mean I'm supposed to do what I see somebody else doing, thinking that, well, okay, that's a good work, so I'll just do that. Well, God has to direct you to do what you are assigned to. We all have an assignment from God, but if we are disobedient in doing our assignment because we want to do what someone else is doing, and we're thinking that by doing that is going to earn us salvation, then we have missed the mark. No, we have to be saved so that God can show us what is our assignment and what is our good work that he wants us to do. We are his workmanship. He created us in Christ Jesus so that we can do good works. So that the works that we do are directed by the spirit of God in us. So he will anoint you to do the works. He will, he will direct you to do the works and enable you to do it. And so you are doing what he called you to do. You are only responsible for doing what he has given to you to do. Not because you saw someone else do something that you thought was good, and you said, I'm going to copy that. No, that's not how he wants us to live our lives. He wants us to be directed by his spirit. And so when you're born again, you are able to hear what the spirit of the Lord says. Being born again simply means his spirit comes to live in you at the moment that you believe. So that's the simple gospel message. You believe, and his spirit comes into you so you can be directed by him to live your life the way you're supposed to. Lastly, this thing about grace is so beautiful. Second, uh, excuse me, uh, the, the second chapter in uh, Titus, uh, verse 11 says, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly, worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now we see that grace actually is a teacher. How does grace teach us? Well, grace teaches us just simply by God giving us the gift uh, of salvation. And by living this life, the Christian life, we can see that he is teaching us how to live and we can live a holy life in this present world. And we just thank and praise God that we're able to do that, but it's only by his grace, only by his grace are we able to do what God has called us to do. 
let's see. Are we still sharing in Zoom? Where am I? Yes, you are still on Zoom. Okay. I am um, uh, I'm trying to close <laughs> the share. And so, uh, that's okay. But anyway, we only have just about five minutes left. I like uh, some comments from from each one of you, uh, if you would just just jump right in there. Uh, tell me what you what what you know about grace. How what can you share with us about the grace of God and and how important it is to keep the message simple. Just anyone can just jump in there with me. Any comments? Grace is the um, unmerited favor of God provided to all of us that believe in him and trust him. Um, it's nothing that we can earn. And that grace uh, enables us to be sensitive to God's teachings. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we, I, I guess really what brought me to this is that I hear so many people um, uh, talking about things that really have nothing to do with salvation. And, they, and they're uh, not that there's anything wrong with, with teaching about um, things like the, the great tribulation or uh, Bible prophecy. Some of those things are important and those things are good, but you don't approach someone uh, who does not know Christ uh, and start talking about those kind of things and, and start talking about uh, things that are really just a matter of opinion. Um, but, but to understand that the gospel message is very simple uh, and we should not hide that. We should not uh, complicate it uh, when we're approaching someone who may not have ever heard the gospel or may uh, be a new Christian. And sometimes people can get things all mixed up. Jesus, when he came, he was speaking to the Pharisees and, and they had already added many laws, uh, even to the law of Moses. And, and they were putting such emphasis on uh, you know, why didn't his disciples uh, wash their hands before they ate? Uh, why did they uh, why did they pick corn on the Sabbath day? Why was he healing on the Sabbath day? Uh, various things like that. And Jesus was trying to let him know, look, I'm Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, isn't it isn't it a good thing to do good on the Sabbath? Um, you know, uh, David ate the show bread. Why? Because he and his men were hungry. So to do good to do right uh, versus just keeping laws just for the sake of keeping laws. There's a, there's a big difference there. So that, that's what really led me into this, this study today. Uh, any other comments here? Um, what, what, what are you, what's on your hearts? What's on my heart is that, you know, it's a, a basic uh, thing about uh, uh, understanding uh, Christ. The only thing you have to mean, uh, you have to do like, if you can put just some of the Bible in your heart, and then like, for instance, it's like the Ten Commandments, and, and simple stuff like that will drive you in the right direction. You know, that's that's the way I believe, because I know if, if you put your whole self into to, to God's word, he will, he will direct you in the right way, you know what I'm saying? So that that's that's the thing I when I, when I see you talk about that it's really simple. Everybody have their own opinion and they, they have their own concept. You don't have to do all that. All you gotta do is read the Bible, and then the, you have to get people that explain. Because sometimes the Bible is confusing as you don't know know what's going on in there. But the simple stuff, the Ten Commandments, you know, the thing that you don't still you don't kill uh, the, the simple stuff that will make you in 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 in, in um to me I believe that it it be, it became uh it make you you know it, it makes you humble you know what I'm saying it be, it make you in in, in, in the, go in the right direction that's that's what I believe that you know and you don't have to 
do all, all that tuning. We a lot of people do all that reading, but the only got to do is read the Bible, just the simple stuff. You know, mm. get you on the right on the right path. You know, that's that's what I think. Let me throw this in there. Or well, when I first met you, you were a Muslim, right? Yep. And uh, and and it was it was a simple thing that drew you into Christianity, into into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And you can you tell me what that one word is? Well, you you me, say you well, said well, it yourself. Well, you know, to be honest, that love. You know, That's that it. love. No, I mean that the, the the when I heard you speak and stuff like that, it it, it changed my view about individual because I was I was real racial. I didn't care about no white folks and all that. But when I came into Christianity, I was being around good brothers and they you know, picked my uh you know my uh, my mind something else. No. Wow, that and and that that's the key right there. The word love. Uh, Brother Mike, yeah, praise God. Praise God. Uh, for me, if you talk about the gospel of Christ, you're talking about the death, the resurrection of God, and the power in the resurrection of God. So the gospel is about, it rotates about that very issues, the death, spying the birth, the death and the resurrection of Christ. So if at all we are preaching to the non-believers, our emphasis is about telling them about who we are believing in, that is Jesus Christ, who died and rose again. Mm -hmm. So we, tell, we let to them that there is this life after, after death, which our Lord Jesus did it. So that is how simple the gospel is, that we are going to tell you Jesus cares for you, loves you, and they will ask you who is Jesus. Jesus is the son of God. He died and rose again. He can give you a better life. As simple as that, I've already preached the gospel. Now, you talked about grace. Grace is undeserved favor. Undeserved that you ask yourself and you find out and you're like, hey, what did I do to deserve what I have? What is this I did? That you find somebody picking you out from the street, giving you a home, giving you a job, and you're like, guy, this is really, this is, the, the, this is what we call now grace. Grace comes in that you can't even believe that this thing has happened to me. And if at all somebody asks you, Brother Mike, how did it happen? You're like, my brother, it has been God. Now, yes. this kind of favor, you can't, you can't even describe it to a person. Most of the people describe it by crying. You've been sick for a lot of years, and uh, from nowhere you're getting healed by just a mere touch of Jesus Christ. It is grace. Mm-hmm. It's a, 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 a man is laid on the, on, on the pool for 38 years. Then Jesus is coming and like, pick up your mat, move. It is grace. Yes. So grace is an undeserved favor. It comes that you, even don't, you don't think, is it really me, Aaron, that this is happening to me? that I am the, the president of the United States. How does that happen? But it has happened because it is the favor of God. And that undesired favor is called grace. Mm -hmm. That's what I've gotten. Oh, my brother, that is powerful. That's wonderful. Any, anyone else wants to uh, add to that? We have about four minutes left um, uh, on this call. Just want to hear from some of the others as well. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I just want to uh, uh, amplify uh, the simplicity of the gospel because one, the gospel itself is Jesus Christ. Yes. Jesus Christ was, and Jesus Christ was simple in all aspects. He mingled with everybody. 
So whoever wants to take the gospel must emulate the example of Jesus Christ and be like him in order for us to reach the, the, to reach the un, unreachable. And now we find that being that he was humble, the Bible tells us in the book of uh, Philippians 2.8, he was so humble until death. And being that he was so humble, he was given name which is above every name. So in order for us to be true Christians, good Christians, we must be as simple as Jesus Christ was. And when I'm talking about simplicity, it means that you are supposed to listen, you are supposed to be there for everyone, regardless of age, regardless of you know, race, so that you can be able to deliver the message to him. And that's the essence of uh, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the same same gospel, uh, we are being reminded that Sua, it is also the power uh, to those who are, it's, it's fully to those who are perishing, but it's also power to those who are being saved. That is yes. the book of First, first, uh, first Corinth, uh, Corinthians 1, 18. So as we are striving to follow Jesus Christ, let us be simple, the same way Jesus was, Christ was simple. And then that message will shall have reached home and many people will be saved. And may God bless you for this word. Praise God. Praise God. Great comments there. Anyone else? Pastor Ken, you, uh, can you throw something else in there? One minute? Amen. I thank God for that session. I believe God is doing something in our life. Yes. And I want to speak about the simplicity of the gospel. And I believe simplicity is to make things to be easier. The gospel to be easier to anyone to understand. Like uh, the gospel we are preaching, sometimes to our children, they don't understand it. So in a simple, in a simple way that they can understand, we preach the message that's here the easier because the gospel is just simple. It doesn't have any a lot of things that we are doing, but uh, when we preach the gospel in a way that even a child can understand and take a message to anyone else, that one will make Jesus to move all over the world. Mm -hmm. But if you make things like uh, I like Habakkuk in chapter two, Habakkuk chapter two, I think verse uh, verse two, from verse one is speaking about. He will stand on a, a fortress and watch to see what the Lord will answer him. But verse 3 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and engrave it so plainly upon tablets that everyone who passes may be able to read it easily and quickly as he has turned by. by. So Abakuk is telling us, in other words, that Everything you are preaching about Jesus Christ, let us preach to make it simple. Anyone can see that message and take to others. Like the woman that was in a, in a well. Mm -hmm. He got a message from Jesus, he took the, to other people. Jesus just Enjoy told him me. that you, you have as five husbands, but the six that you have is not even yeah. yours. Now yeah. he went to the people and told the people now, I've yeah. come and see. The one yes. has given me, he has told me about my secrets. So the gospel we have to make to make it to be symbol so that yes. everyone can understand and the world will be easier to get the knowledge that was speaking about Jesus Christ. So Praise I thank you. May yes. God bless you for what you are teaching us.